Today's episode of the BS Podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor and the only fan-friendly app for buying and selling tickets for sports and music and Hamilton. Oh yeah, Hamilton's on there too. Other sites have the nasty habit of showing you lower prices, charging huge fees at checkout. At SeatGeek, the price you see is always the price you pay to start using SeatGeek. Download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by HBO, the home of Any Given Wednesday, my new show that starts on HBO on Wednesday night at 10 o'clock, June 22nd, right after the NBA Finals, which will hopefully be a good one. Uh, we should mention also the Ringer Podcast Network has grown. We have four new podcast feeds, including Keeping It 1600, that you can subscribe to. Chuck Todd was on this week. He was great. We also have The Watch, hosted by Andy Greenwald and Chris Ryan. That has two podcasts this week, including Andy interviewed Colin Farrell. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Ringer NFL pod. Kevin Clark is on there right now. He interviewed Andrew Luck, who is a really uh, interesting guy. And then we have The Ringer NBA pod, which I did a quick 15-minute podcast yesterday with Kevin Clark, who is the only Orlando Magic fan that I've ever met in my life. and might be the only Orlando Magic fan, but we talked about Scott Skiles' uh, bizarre resignation so that was only a 15 minute quick pod but please subscribe to all those feeds it's going great we are killing it on itunes thanks to you guys so thank you um this is awesome all right let's go yeah clear enough for you all right, all right it's friday morning yeah. west coast time um the first writer from any given wednesday that i've had on my show this is an honor Trayvon Free, how are you? I'm good, man. I got up early. I haven't gotten up this early in a long time. I know. It's good. Well, you're still getting adjusted for <laughs> still, West Coast yeah, time. You're trying. from here, though. Yeah, back home. But I haven't seen anybody because it's so hard to work, move, readjust, and also want to go out after 7 o'clock. And you have more shoes than anyone I've ever met, and you just had to, <laughs> to figure out just where to put those in your place. I, did. I had to get a second bedroom. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I got, I'm like... How many shoes do you have now? I'm like somewhere, I think I'm north of 200 now. Gee, how many of the Jordans? Probably like 150. Oh my Lord. <laughs> you got to invite, look at Tate. Tate's getting excited over there. I saw, those are the 30s, right? I haven't, I don't have any of those. The, thir oh, the only pair of the 30s, 30s I actually right liked were the ones they wore in the Jordan high school game. Yeah. yeah and those yeah, those were amazing. Mm. But all the rest of them was like, why won't they make them like that? So my son visited the office yesterday, and you weren't even at your desk. And I think you I was had, doing Hamilton. Yeah, and yeah. you had a, you had an Alexander Hamilton bobblehead and a stone cold, a stone cold <laughs> Steve Austin figure on the desk. He's like, "Who's this? <laughs> I love this guy." And then His finally, collided. he met you. And then uh, as we were leaving, he goes, "I like that Trayvon guy. I could be friends with that guy." <laughs> so you really hit that Hamilton and wrestling combo. Yeah, I hope. Uh... I hope I can get him a little, uh, little land action when you guys go when he goes again. I think was it May end of May? The end of May, I think he's yeah. gonna go. Um, let's talk NBA playoffs because. Um, oh man. So you played. I I was like when people actually played basketball when yeah. they talk about basketball. Unlike myself, who only played through high school and then played intramurals and then <laughs> kept playing recreationally. But you actually played. Yeah, I had a lot of. Uh, I played with a lot of good players, so I feel like. When I'm watching these guys, I, play, yeah. I actually played with some of the guys who are still in the league now. But like having had those experiences and watching them play, like I got, I have a good feel for what's going on. Having never played Correct. in the NBA, you played uh, <laughs> high school ball. You're on the same team as Tyson Chandler. Yeah, Chandler. We played uh, two years together. Right, and, and then, then uh, you played at Long Beach State. Long Beach. Yeah. So you see things a tiny bit differently. Like for instance, when uh, Chris Paul broke his hand in the Clipper game. And then Blake went out and we started having a discussion and you made the point, which is you had seen, you'd seen this happen a million oh, yeah. times in basketball games where Blake just kind of checked out. Like oh, he yeah. probably maybe could have kept playing, but after he saw the yeah, Chris Paul, he's like, I'm done, I'm out. Yeah. Like you're the star player of the team. You just lost your star point guard and your season's basically over. Why would you risk playing more games at that point? If you're Blake And you're Griffin? mad at the training staff. Yeah. Like, and the, and you knew they tried to trade you. <laughs> right. So like, fuck this team. Like, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even know if it's, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's in his head? But if Chris Paul is still playing, I really don't think Blake Griffin, I think he's just gutting oh, through Oh, absolutely. Because he, I feel like if, if Chris Paul doesn't go down 
at least Blake still feels like he has a chance. But it's like if I lose my my star point guard, whether no matter what their relationship is off the court, like yeah. if, if if I don't have him, I don't see an incentive for me to like risk injury. I, I kind of don't blame him. I don't either. Like I've seen I think guys I would do, do it the same way. I've seen guys do it all the time. Like yeah. if your your season's basically over, you know it's over. Like I I hurt my leg. Like, yeah. <laughs> make me play. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> so you're watching this series, OKC San Antonio. I called it. There's, there I was, was the one person in the office. You did. On the writing staff. There was an athleticism <laughs> advantage, and OKC started controlling the pain a little, and all of a sudden you could kind of feel a shift. I, by, in game four, third quarter, I really felt like Durant was going to be out of OKC in like five quarters. There was it was so snippy right. and they were so tense and it just seemed like they were gonna fall apart. And then it flipped. And now I'm like, man, they, they might be able to go toe to toe with the Warriors. Well, I when I saw I knew it was over for the Spurs when they still had the lead, only because in game five, uh they were the the Thunder were coming back and Tim Duncan tried to lay the ball up. I think you remember this play. Oh, the up and under. Yeah, and yeah, I sad. think he got three inches off the ground and the ball rolled off the rim, and I was like, yeah, they're done. He's yeah. so done. And then Westbrook just took over. But we were talking about it last night. Like, I wouldn't necessarily count the Thunder out of this Warriors series. Like, I think they're going to – the uh, Thunder are very blowout pro. <laughs> that was yeah. on game one. Like, they can be amazing or they can get blown out by 40. But – if they come into the series with their head on straight, I think it'll be like probably the, the one of the best series we've seen in a long time. Especially because you have Thunder Warriors, you have potential Cavs Heat, and then you have potential Cavs Thunder, which is like a great uh, that'll be fun. LeBron Durant and yeah. Westbrook Kyrie, and then you have or you have a rematch of last year, which a lot of people like myself, don't necessarily give the Warriors credit for <laughs> winning that championship, but I'd like to see any of those series. There's a couple good things going on for the Thunder now. I mean, the reasons I didn't like them and the reasons I was so frustrated by them during the season, for one thing, they were just poorly coached. You know, yeah. like even like very subtle stuff, like the fact that he would take Durant and Westbrook out at the same time. The internet had already decided this was a bad idea five years ago. Right. Like you want to stagger it because you have – two of the best seven guys in the league, you want you have the chance to play one of the best seven guys in the league at all times right. for 48 straight minutes. Why wouldn't you do that? Um, and then just little subtle stuff. Like they, they had marginalized Ibaka. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure like that he, out. He yeah, I don't, I don't understand corner. that either. Like he, he didn't really have a good series until like the last maybe like three quarters or like the end of this last game because he would, he had gone like, I think he'd had like, if I remember the stat, it was like 19 points over the course of the series or something like right. that. Right, and just not wasn't, a lot of rebounds. Yeah, he just wasn't playing that great. But you know this, though. Like, when you're marginalized like that, and you're basically, go stand over here. But when we need you to rebound and block shots, you got to do that. Yeah, but like, we're not going to give you the ball, and we're you, not going to stroke your ego in any way. You kind of check out, like yeah, 25%. Yeah, you spend all that time in your head just cursing out your teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, You're just like... Well, like if you could, this is what's gonna happen. Fuck these guys, and then a rebound comes your way, and just like I might get it, or maybe not. Like <laughs> you guys get it. Like Westbrook seems to like. It's totally like, understandable. Yeah. Like I always try to put myself in the athlete's shoes, and it's like if I'm Serge Ibaka, other than the fact that I might have the chance to make the finals and I make fifty million dollars a year, and I came from the Congo, and this is like right. amazing. I'm living my dream, <laughs> but just fundamentally, is this a fun team to play on? If I'm Serge Ibaka. And the answer is no. You right. know, it's like all one-on-one -on -one stuff, and it's like Serge staying in the corner. Doesn't take advantage of what he does. So Donovan flips that in game four, puts in the Kaner Adams lineup, and all of a sudden the Spurs look old. Yeah, oh and my Duncan God. Duncan was too old. Boban's too, t you know, game six, Boban's way too tall. West Adam, was too short and too old. Adam was basically resting defending uh, Duncan. Like, he, yeah. he didn't have to do anything. And Adam it was, was just a like, beast. Yeah, he was just like, I'll just play on offense. Like, I can stand here next to Tim Duncan. I'm big enough to just stand in front of him and yeah. keep him off the off the rim. And he was, like, great down there. He had a double-double last game. And it became an old-school bully ball series where they're just, like, they're getting offensive rebounds. Yeah, they're getting I, second chance points. I feel, I feel so bad for Tim Duncan, right? It was sad to watch that. Yeah, I kind of wish. Yeah, I went to Game Seven Clips last year, 
which they almost won, and he was just heroic and awesome in that. That actually ended up being my last column at Grantland. Would have been such a great way for him to go out. But everybody, I think, always athletes, I think celebrities to some degree, like actors and right. singers, like they're always going to stay too long. And with athletes, it's usually one to three years too long. Yeah. Like so he was one year too to long. Get out on time. But he did have a couple moments in game six. Yeah. They yeah. A couple like, pick and rolls with Andre Miller. For a and second, like I was like, wait a minute. Like, maybe like there's still some life left in Tim Duncan. But I think that was just him getting emptying the tank. <laughs> so when he, he goes out, like, I love just it. Like, they played in the whole fourth quarter. Right. That was it. I mean, I, I know he's going to retire. Just so from the, how that fourth quarter went, it was clear that they were like, all right, ride it out, Timmy. It was funny how like everybody was saying, retire, retire. And then at the end of the game, the announcers immediately got nostalgic and was like, you know, Maybe he shouldn't retire. Like, I feel like he's still got a little... Like, those are nah, the people who yeah, are, like, ruining people's bodies and lives. Ugh. Like, telling you you should do something just because they don't want to see you leave. Like, <laughs> let the guy go, man. Well, plus he played, he played 20 years. He's pretty much healthy the entire time. Yeah. But then you have all those postseason miles. And that's where it's like, those playoff games. Like, that, like, when you play a game like Westbrook played yesterday, yeah, that counts like a playoff game and a half. He's playing warp speed right. for four quarters, and it's almost like a football running back. Like that's like a thirty-nine carry game for a running back. He's gonna be one of those guys that when when he starts to hit the decline, you're gonna see it so hard. Oh yeah, because he plays so fast and so like his first step when he's like taking guys off the dribble, like he literally he goes past the basket before he lays right. the ball in. Like every he did it two times in a row last game. Where you're just like, how fucking fast is this dude? Or like. He's just pumping a hundred at a hundred the whole time. And like I don't know how sustainable that is. How old is he? 27, 28? 27, 28. I would like, say he's at his the peak of his athletic powers right now. Yeah, like you enjoy these next like that that's another reason why you gotta like make the right decision in terms of staying in OKC or going to a team where you have a really good chance to win the championship. Cause like weirdly, they're in the position now to kind of win a championship. Which right. doesn't seem right because everybody had them losing against uh, San Antonio. Well, that 55-win yeah. season they had is really embarrassing. They had two of the best seven guys in the league. Adams is good. Yeah, Cantor is a really nice guy to have off the bench. Waiters is skilled. Yeah. Um, Roberson is a really good defender. Abaka is a guy that they could probably trade this summer for a yeah. top five pick if they wanted. Like It's not like this was a bad team. When you think the Spurs won 67... Right. And OKC won 55. And I know OKC had a couple of things like Monty Williams, his wife had that tragic thing. I think that right. derailed them yeah. a tiny bit. New coach. He had, but still, like 55 wins is that's why I didn't vote for Duran and Westbrook for first team all NBA. I feel like when you when you have a great season, like when you get into series, it's such a different mindset. It's such a different way of playing the game <clears throat> that people think like, oh, naturally, this team's going to lose to this team because the, the Spurs had like a borderline, borderline the same season as the Warriors almost, minus plus or minus a few games. And then the 32 point blowout. Yeah. In game and then, one. And you're just like, oh, of course the Spurs are going to do this. This is how they played in the season. And then they get, well, they lose four in a row or, or no, they won. They lost four or five, but yeah, they really could have lost all of them. Yeah. Like had that blowout gone differently, they could have gotten swept. The Spurs were, were, I think, by the time game time happened, nine point favorites in game two. That's when you when it's that high for a must win game for the other team, right? But I, I mean, I swear in that third quarter, if you if you like bet your life on what's going to happen, I would I would have said okay, she's going to self combust. They're going to lose in game five, and Durant's going to leave, and you could feel it. And it yeah, it really felt like LeBron in two thousand ten during that Boston series when it started to shift, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you could feel the history as the game's going on, like oh. Holy shit. <laughs> and and it just didn't happen. Like I give him a lot of credit, man, because I, I feel like that team was falling apart. Right. And he just wouldn't let it happen in that fourth quarter. Like that was one of the best quarters I've ever seen him play. You know, yeah. he just he just would not let them lose. It's something about when, when Westbrook takes over a game, like That's I don't, scary. It's it's almost it makes me wonder about his relationship with Durant because it almost feels like he starts out going, all right, let's do this together. Yeah. And the first time Durant fucks up, he goes, never mind. Yeah. yeah. I'll just, like, I got, I got this. this. Yeah, like, like, I, like, it's like the inverse of when Durant defended him against that comment by Mark Cuban yeah. at, the, at the press conference. But, like, on the court, it feels like Durant's or uh, Russell's, like, the dude. He's, like, leading that group. Whereas, like, 
publicly though, it feels like Kevin Durant's the star of that team. Yeah. So I kind of get why Cuban would even say something like that because like the advertisement, the shoes, like everything, like Kevin Durant's a star. But on the court, how, like it's all Westbrook. Well, like, well, partly it's almost like that AAU mentality of yeah. the guy who has the ball, it just seems like he's more important. I think the biggest difference with them, when the, you know, and I was rooting for San Antonio because Sal and I had, had this 10 to 1 bet on, on San Antonio to win the finals from last, like early July. So, I, yeah, I was rooting for them, but I didn't ultimately care because I think OKC Golden State's fantastic. But um, when Durant shoots, I never want him to shoot. When you're rooting against OKC, you're like, oh, no, don't, don't no, no, don't right. let him. And when Westbrook was shooting, I was like, let him shoot. And he was oh, dr- Westbrook's <laughs> taking a three. Great. Yeah, please take that. But he just started making them. He was nailing He made terrible shots in that series. How great was that That three? I feel like even he kind of knew that three in the corner shouldn't have gone in when he just oh, stood he, there and He stared. never makes those. He's, <laughs> I said this before on the pod. He's, he's one of the four worst three-point shooters in the history of the NBA for anyone who's taken over like 1,500 shots. <laughs> but he makes them he, when he they he matter. He made two huge yeah, 30-footers. He makes, he made them when they, when they matter. Yeah. Like, Wade's like that, too. Wade, would, Wade was a terrible three-point shooter who makes big three pointers for some reason do you do you feel like that marcus smart's another one i'm gonna lump marcus smart in that for no <laughs> reason at all <laughs> but in terms of like talking about the spurs like i always thought uh the um, lockout championship was kind of like not a real championship how do you feel about that like didn't oh that's a fake championship like, i never yeah, I, like I, I, I wrote that it was such a bad season because <laughs> i was living in boston and my dad never wanted to go because that was one of the rick patino years so i went to a lot of those games all those dudes were out of shape yeah they thought the season was going to get canceled and then at the last second all of a sudden they're playing and it was like just fat out of shape NBA <laughs> players in san antonio and indiana and utah i think were the three teams that had been practicing during the lockout right and they all came in in great shape and kind of kicked ass. But, yeah, that wasn't a great team. Yeah, they were going over Tim Duncan's, like, resume last night and showing all the pictures of him and uh, Pop together and, like, the five championships. I'm like, come on, four and a quarter maybe? Like, Yeah, that's I an would, asterisk. I wouldn't say five. And they also, they won in, uh, they won the 3 one, which was just, if you just look at the talent in the league, there was this weird dip in basically. That's when they beat the Cavs, right? Yeah, 0 3 4 5 6 7 just the guys from the previous decade who were supposed to be at their peaks, they just weren't there. And it right. was like a really weak league. That that 3 team Duncan was on, it's one of the worst supporting casts anyone's won the title with. Like it was like Tony Parker as a baby, yeah. Manu as a baby, washed up David Robinson. Yeah. Captain Jack was probably <laughs> the second best guy on that team. And they just rolled through and they and they were awesome. I think that the one missed title that I think they would have won and probably should have won was 06 when Dallas got by them. Oh, the game yeah. seven at home, they're up three with like 25 seconds left, and Manu did, goes to the line, get layup, gets fouled, goes to overtime. See, I think they I thought beat, they had the best team that year. I think they should have beat Miami, though. Like I feel like Which that one? was a lost championship when Ray Allen hit the shot. Oh, no question. Like, but, I that, that, but I don't know if they win the next year if they win in 13. That's why I feel like they, they, they won one. Yeah. And it evened out. I mean, I've never seen anyone. Usually, the right team wins the wins the series. That was I would when say I was, nine nine out of a hundred times the right team wins the series. That was one of the few times the wrong team won the series. Yeah, I was rooting. That was when I was rooting hard against Miami. I mean, I never rooted for Miami. I was happy when LeBron went back to Cleveland. Yeah, but I I was I wanted them to lose every championship because you care about the Cleveland economy. <laughs> 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 no, not so much. More so because. I liked, I liked LeBron as an individual. I hated the, I hated the, uh, the. Uh, you hated him teaming up with Wade. Yeah, and, I hated, yeah. I hated all of that. I hated the uh, decision. I hated that super team shit. It was just like, come on, man. Like, just like stay in Cleveland and win one for your team. Like, if right. that's your team. And I think but, that thing was. I think they decided that two years earlier. But I, I like, I admire his, like. I don't want to think of him as a ring chaser, but I feel like if they don't win in Cleveland, he'll probably leave again. Like yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. Like, if, do you admire his head painting? 
His what? The, the painted hairline. Oh his God, the hairline! That thing, that thing moves more than the San Andreas fault line. Like <laughs> if you, like one minute it's like perfect, and the next minute it's shaped like a perfect C, and then the next minute it's like a kind of like a Nike check. Like yeah. I don't know what is going Just on. Shave with that, that thing, LeBron. Like I don't, I don't think he's ready to do it yet. Like, but at least it wasn't bad as Boozer though. Like he has to, LeBron has to Boozer paint the corners. Cheap. Yeah, Boozer had to paint his entire head. Which is like, and Doc Rivers does it too. Like he sweats during the game, and you see it start to drip out of his head. And you're like, "Come on, guys!" Like people are gonna start think black people melt. Like, get like, <laughs> like fix this shit. Like you guys have money. Like get it. Like get it done. Dirt. How would you psychoanalyze LeBron just from what you've seen? If he was your teammate, and you had to play with him day in and day out, I how think, would you handle him as a human being? I think LeBron's the kind of guy that. If you want to be in his world, if you want to be on his side, you have to do what LeBron wants you to do. I feel like LeBron will be your best friend as long as you do what he wants you to do. Mm. So if you like if I feel like he runs his teams. So if you're going to be his teammate, you be the teammate he wants you to be or like somehow you get traded somehow. Right. But he seemed like he'd be the coolest dude to you, the nicest dude to you, as long as you're either someone he views as his equal if you're not someone he views as equal, then you become one of those guys who have you have to live in his world the way he wants you to live. If you're like a Wade or a Carmelo, those guys who he like really respects, I think those are the guys who can like really be real with LeBron or like maybe like even criticize or give him shit. But he seems like the kind of guy and having played with similar guys where like if you're not on board, then you're like you won't have a good time. You just won't. I think we forget how one, he grew up, and then two, just how famous he was when he was seventeen. Yeah, like I had the guy had a Hummer when he was seventeen. He had no money and he had a Hummer on the cover of he was on the cover of Slam a couple times. Like he was on ESPN. His high school. Imagine what would have been like for you if your your high school games were on ESPN. I mean, we had. It's kind of almost crazy now that I think about it that like we didn't have any because like we played against Eddie Curry. Uh, skinny we, Eddie Curry? Yeah, skinny, right. With skinny <laughs> Eddie, we played against Skinny Eddie Curry. We played against um, Dewan Wagner. We Ooh. played against a lot of big high school guys at the time, and like we had Chandler. So like we were uh, we were playing. We were like touring the country playing basketball like a college team, and we were fifteen. So like that was crazy. In and you were fifteen, and not, not like the wealthiest group of kids. I'm oh guessing, God, right? no, not even close. So like, where are you staying Compton. in hotels and stuff? Like they were putting us up. Nike was paying for everything. We That's could, amazing. It's, we had, it's just so corrupt. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a Nike contract. We would get the Jordans like weeks before they came out. Uh, we so went. You to, had, so you had no money, but you're wearing like state of the art Jordans. Oh God, like the Space Jam Jordan Elevens, my favorite Jordans, <laughs> had come out. Uh, my sophomore year and uh, we would had those like long before people got like we were getting we got everything we had like the best clothes the best shoes the best uniforms and even when we played in the La Schwab Invitational in Oregon we practiced at Nike headquarters and they gave us that was when the Kevin Durant shoe or not Kevin Durant the Kevin Garnett shoes had come out yeah, we had gotten like three pair of those in three different colors. Um, our coaches raided the Nike employee store. Uh, oh my god! They were it was it was pretty amazing. And there's probably like two hundred teams like this. Oh, that absolutely, have a deal easily, like this. easily. And what kind of car did Tyson Chandler drive as a senior? Uh, he had a he had an Escalade, the first Escalade when they first came out, and everybody had an Escalade or wanted an Escalade. And where did Tyson Chandler live? Uh, <laughs> It's a good question because <laughs> we were at school in Compton, and uh, and he's driving an Escalade. Oh yeah, That's I rode in it with him once. I don't know. I forget oh where God. we were going. I think we were going. It was some team thing, and we all had to like go and like carpool it. And I ended up riding with him in his That's Escalade. You, so you won the lottery on that one. Yeah, I won the Tyson yeah, Chandler Tyson's Escalade, Escalade lottery. <laughs> but yeah, like it was, man. it was a uh, that I, he he knew. It was interesting to be around a guy who knew he was going to the league to see yeah. just how you, the behavior of those kind of guys. And, like, you get treated like a king everywhere you go. Like, everyone knows, like, you're the golden boy. Uh, he was so thin. like Right. He was a rail. Right, he was so thin. I was, like, actually kind of, like, bigger, a little stronger than him at the time. 
And then I remember when he got drafted uh, before their season started in Chicago, him, Eddie Curry, and Jason Williams had come to our practice and they like practice with us. And he put on maybe like 20 pounds of muscle and, and uh, shooting. He was like, he had an outside shot. Like so much had changed in like that, Gosh. like six or seven months between leaving high school, getting drafted and starting the NBA season. Hold on, we gotta, uh, we gotta say hi to our friends at 5-4 Club. You might be busy like me. You're busy, you're, you're helping us launch a show here. Yeah. Um, if you're like me, you don't have time to shop. You don't have time to shop, whether it's clothes for the office, the club, your daughter's two-day soccer tournament this weekend, a dinner event, doesn't matter, you just don't have the time. Or you might just be lazy as hell. Uh, either way, the 5-4 Club has you covered, and they just sent me some awesome clothes that I've been wearing, because again, I'm too lazy to shop. They will provide you styling advice, recommendations, they'll make you a styling profile, They'll deliver clothes to your door every month. Uh, the profiles are classic, casual, forward, or mix. Uh, free shipping, direct delivery to your doorstep. Clothes come every month or so, and it's only $60 a month. Go to 54club.com, use promo code BS at sign up, and get 50% off your first package. That's $120 worth of clothing for $30 for your first month's package. Um, I highly recommend 54 Club. I like the clothes. All right. Back to uh, back to basketball. So, Russell Westbrook, who is now the most fascinating person in the playoffs somehow, mm -hmm. even though Steph Curry is in, he's the best player in twenty years. Oh no, he's not the best player. He's the most beloved player in twenty years. I they think LeBron's so the best much. player in twenty years. Yeah, they love, but the God, they Steph love has Curry. the highest approval rating of any player in twenty years. Yeah. Like, everyone just loves Steph. He's too clean. Like I'm, I'm waiting to, I'm uh -oh. waiting for that skeleton to come out of the closet. Oh no, man. like it's. I, I don't I just don't believe in it. <laughs> like I've I've seen it. You've just been tainted. Too, yeah, I've seen it happen too many times. Where like Tiger Woods is like a good example of just like you have these crystal clean image. Mike, I mean, we, Michael Jordan had that same thing where you're just like you're so nice and you're so good at what you do and like you haven't really had. Yeah, but any there was trouble. always whispers. Right. See, Steph came in. We did a podcast. Him and David Lee came into the Grantland Podcast Studio in like 2012. And he just seemed like one of one of like he easily could have just started working in Greatland. He just seemed like a completely normal, hundred percent, um, almost normal to the point that when he started to become famous, I I started wondering like this could be weird for him. Yeah, I I want it to not be true. I want it to never happen for Steph because I think he's great. But I just like I feel like something's there. Like I remember when he a couple of days ago when he accidentally tweeted that porn account. Yeah, I was hoping that that was the thing. I was like, did he like accidentally like not direct message some kind of porn thing? And he's yeah. a porn addict. Like, what is it for Steph Curry? Like, what's the thing? Like, he's so picture perfect. Or it's like, I, I feel like this world has jaded me in a way where I don't believe in it anymore. So what? Do you, so how would you have you never met Westbrook? No. What's your LeBron read on Westbrook? Because the most interesting thing about Westbrook to me is he fits this profile of guys that we've had in the league. Who are great players, who are force of nature guys, who the best situation for them personally, they are convinced is the best situation for their team. And just, I don't want to say irrational confidence, but overwhelming confidence, alpha dog, I'm the guy. And usually the teammates don't like the guy that much. And with him, they love him. Like yeah. when he does well, the whole team feeds off it. And I don't know whether they have Stockholm syndrome I think that's or whether they genuinely love him. I think like I think if they actually, I think when they when they're not playing with him anymore, they'll probably realize how much they didn't like him. <laughs> like I think that's what's gonna because like when you're in it, you you have to you spend so much time with these guys, and you either can be the guy who's openly adverse to that guy who's just like, I don't really fucking like you. Like in college, you don't have a choice. I got to yeah. play with you. In the NBA, they'll trade you. Like they'll get rid of you. But like he seems like the kind of guy who I would probably, if I was on his team, if I did, if we weren't real friends, like really friends, I probably wouldn't enjoy it. I, I just wouldn't like Supposedly it. Supposedly he's an awesome guy. Yeah, like if that's, that's what I mean. Like if he's a good, cool dude, and I mean, it's supposedly a little weird too. Like he has like this whole weird loves fashion. I love, I I love the way he is he's, like changed. I mean, the weird like in game. a good way, like just quirky. Yeah, and uh, I like the little dance thing they do. They like he just like he 
he's his own person 110 yeah. percent of the time and I thought like he they were gonna get into a fight when like Villanueva walks through their little like thing because I don't know where his temperament is on those things. I've never seen him really get into any on the court fights. He seemed like the kind of dude who would get into fights all the time because his energy is always at a hundred. But he kind of just like does his thing. Like I don't know if you ever remember, if you ever seen that clip where they call a timeout. Westbrook's walking to the bench. And like one of the guys on the bench is high fiving everyone as they walk to the bench, and he misses Westbrook, and Westbrook walks, he turns, yeah. he turns around and stares through his face, yeah. like you're not gonna slap my hand. He like comes back and like slap, like those kind of things make me wonder like what is going on like in terms of that relationship where it's like oh shit I didn't I didn't high five Russell like I got a high like I think he's been good for Durant. I think Durant is a pretty soft-spoken guy. Yeah, he balances them out pretty well. Who um, who had a really tough life. And, you know, when you saw him in Texas tonight, he wasn't, like, tough. Like, even yesterday, there was this moment. David West set this pick. Oh, the put, yeah. Yeah, and they were like, was that a flagrant or what? But if you watch the replay, he does it, and Durant kind of goes back, and then he death stares him. David West is, like, top seven guys you don't want to mess yeah, with he looks in the like NBA. a monster <laughs> but Durant, Durant's got a toughness to him that I don't feel like he had at Texas in the first couple of years at OKC and I, I think a lot of that comes from Westbrook like sometimes you need that guy to feed off of I feel like sometimes it could, it could turn into a false confidence or like I don't right. feel like Durant's the best guy to be fighting a guy especially like no. David West because he's still ain't the biggest guy you know what <laughs> else helps them though is, is Adams is like the guy you want oh yeah oh yeah Adams I have Adams is like almost a horror movie villain where his expression oh, yeah. never changes. <laughs> it's he's just like the, the killer that he has an ax sticking out of his chest. He's just walking forward, still trying to get you. Any dude with that mustache would do anything you want he's him the to best. do. Blank slate. He doesn't <laughs> react. Like, yeah. Like, it's so amazing. He's like, got 20, 20 brothers and sisters or something. Yeah, yeah that dude's And they're badass. all like 6'5". Like yeah. some crazy, like they have a starting five in their family. He's, but, he's this guy. He's the guy that if somebody just punched him in the face in the court, he would just not react. He yeah, would just you would look walking. at your you would look at your hand. He was like, "Did I connect with that? Did I hit a person? What? My hand's broken." <laughs> and Adams is just looking at you like, "You punched me." I, I thought he was going to punch that. that fan. Yeah, like when they grabbed that his arm. That was great. He just he did the the silent rage killer yeah. death stare, walk toward him a little bit. Which, but uh, I think. It's a tough team. They're not going to be afraid of the Warriors. No, I don't and think so. Their games that they played this year were really fucking exciting. You but, know, they were high scoring, and right. it's just back and forth, and the breathtaking pace. But I wonder if that works against them, though, like not being afraid. Like, I feel like if you're not aware of what you should be afraid of, yeah. you kind of you can lose yourself in the game, and you can like be completely blinded to the right strategy to actually win the game because – you're so pumped up. You've lost. Th- you lost three times to this team over the course of the season, and you just were the underdogs against the Spurs. You beat the Spurs. Now's your chance to go to the NBA Finals and possibly win a championship for like the, what the second time. Yeah. And if you aren't smart about it, if you're too into the now and not looking at the wider scope of it, I think that can also hurt you by being too headstrong or too. In this moment, you kind of got to like get you. You have to know your enemy. You can't just be like, oh, of course, we're going to beat the Warriors because we got this full head of steam and we're figuring it out. We're firing together like people are coming along. You have to know you, their weak, their strength, so to speak, and not go in there thinking this is just your time. So if I'm going state, a couple things worry me. One is that the other there's four great players in the series. Wow, Clay's almost there. Is Clay a great player now? I, I feel like for feel me, like, he's I'm mentally almost there with him. I think he he. I started realizing he was a great player, but Steph Curry's like fucking mega dome is so big yeah. that you don't realize he's a good player but or a great Clay's player. Clay's been incredible because in every time like the games where uh, Steph wasn't playing. Curry, uh, Clay was killing it. Like he kept, he's been like lockstep with like three point records for. They put, they were trading records oh, at yeah. one point. So like it's easy to forget just how good Clay Thompson is. Well, and also the defense. Like the, I thought he just took out Lillard in those last couple oh, yeah. games in this series. And I, my frustration with Clay was that he would kind of come and go, which I think is the same problem as Wiggins has. Where you, yeah. you'd go to a game. Like I'd be in the stands, and be like, is Clay? Oh, he's out there. Like you just forget right. he was out there for eight minutes. 
and now he's learning to like he'll post up every once in a while. Right. He's 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 just there all the time. So I maybe there's five great players in the series, but Westbrook or Durant have the capability of being the best player in any game. Sure. And Golden State, it's just that it's just those two and LeBron are the only two that can go into a Golden State game. And Golden State might not have the best player in that particular game. You know what I mean? And Golden State kind of, and I kind of think this is partially what makes Steph great. Like their system really works. Yeah. Like, I don't know if Steph Curry doesn't go to the Warriors if he's the Steph Curry we know today. Like if he ends up on the Knicks or some other team when he's drafted, I feel like it changes his career in a way where he can be misused. Like he works great in this warrior system. With and with Clay. It's yeah, like with, the totality of those two yeah, guys with together. Clay, with Draymond, yeah. with Harrison. Like it's it's almost like perfect for him to be there. And I don't know if at this point, if he should ever leave, like if this team somehow disbanded, like Tate thinks he's going to Charlotte. Charlotte, really? Yeah. Tate's Tate's <laughs> but Tate, Tate, three, three, three for them, three for us. Tate, Tate's from oh, because his dad Tate's for from Charlotte. Carolina, yeah. so I mean he's got some. But yeah, he, <laughs> he thinks Steph wants to win three in a row, and then he goes to win three more in in in, uh, in Charlotte. Do you think they'll win this year? I don't. I think they're going to win again. You think so? But I... there's a snare in where they don't get out of this series, and it starts with. Um, here's what worry. If I'm a Golden State fan, this is what would worry me. I need Bogut in this series. Yeah. I need like 25 to 27 really good Bogut minutes a game. And I don't know if I can rely on him physically. You know, like Adams is an issue. Yeah. Because Adams you, is like Draymond cannot handle Steven Adams. He's not going to be able to keep him off the offensive board at all. And if you remember the game when Steph hit the 35 footer at that best game of the season, they got out rebounded by 30. Yeah, especially that's be, not that's you, not ten. That's not 10. like the thirty is plus thirty is not an accident. Like they got <laughs> right. crushed right. on the boards, and that that's a real problem. They're going to need Bogut. They're going to need Azili, and they're going to need to keep those guys off the boards. I, I feel like no one in the NBA boxes out anymore or crashes the boards. Right. But especially on a team like Golden State, where they're so used to three point shooters that you get into the routine of if Steph or Clay or someone shoots the ball, you just get back. Yeah, and you don't even crash the, you don't even go to the boards because you think it's going in, so you end up losing. You just about, lose every rebound. You, yeah, you start losing rebounds there just by having that mentality off the board. And then if you have a team that's really playing hard that night, you're probably going to get out rebounded by thirty that night, no matter how many shots you're hitting. Well, just think about the math, right? Like the biggest advantage Golden State has is they hit thirteen threes a game, right? Oklahoma City might hit four or five a game, so. So Golden State, every game is going to be plus eight with threes. But if Oklahoma City is getting 10 extra offensive rebounds right. a game, they're getting 10 extra possessions, yeah. that evens out the threes. And that's why I think this can be a close series. And it tires out your, it tires out Draymond. It tires out the guys. And that's that's the other key point is Draymond. Yeah. This is You're asking a lot from Draymond in this series because right. he's got Adams and he's got Canner. And if Ibaka gets fully reengaged, oh my God, there's Ibaka... three guys coming at the rim after every shot. If they get Ibaka to turn on... And I Adams felt like is, yesterday. Did you see? Like I felt like he was engaged yesterday. Yeah, it started to click. Yeah, like, it started to come back. Like especially now they they got this new energy. I mean, if you get those three playing, it's, it can it can be dangerous for the Warriors. But also, the Cavaliers have uh, have made at least fifteen three pointers in the last four games. Right. Or some crazy stat like it's that. It's a barrage. So, like if they keep that up, well, that's another thing is <laughs> you can't measure. You know, one team's going to be better than the other, but three, if somebody just starts making threes, it just, it upsets the seesaw. Offensive rebounds and threes are the two things that can upset whoever's better than yeah. who's ever. Oh, that, I, that reminds me of when my senior year in college, we were in the tournament and we were playing, we were a 12 seed playing a five and we were uh, playing against Tennessee. And that year we we led the NCAA in uh, points per game. We were at like almost, averaging almost ninety points. Who a was game. on this team? Uh, Anybody I know? Anybody I remember? Um, no. We had Aaron Nixon, who was like he was like a fantastic player, amazing three point shooter. He might have hit like five buzzer beaters from like thirty feet that year. Yeah. Um, but not anybody like who went pro or. So like, you were frisky. 
Frisky kids from Long Beach, 12 yeah. seed. We were. Uh, How we many? Played... Do you remember what the line was for the game? I probably wagered on it. I don't remember <laughs> what it was. I we were. We, I interrupted you. Go ahead. We, but yeah, we we were averaging almost 90 points a game. We were shooting. We were like top, I think two or three in the country in three pointers. We were playing. We were a fast up and down team. Yeah. And uh, they come out and just barrage three pointers like they just couldn't yeah. miss. And it was one of those things where at halftime we were losing, and we were shooting 45 percent from three. Wow. And we were still losing. And <laughs> it was one of those games where the other team, we both shoot well, but if somebody's just shooting so much better than you, there's nothing you can do about it. That's what happened in game four to, okay, to uh, San Antonio. Remember they had a six-point lead. Foy made a three. I think Canner made a three. And then all of a sudden, OKC okay, so just started making everything, yeah. and, they, and they had this fourteen minute stretch. They just made every shot they took. Yeah, you just there's no de- there's no defending. You can't stop that. You can't stop a made basket. Like yeah, we were trading threes with them, but for every m- two misses, they were making them. So like we're shooting forty five percent, which is a, an amazing number to be shooting at ha- at halftime. I think we took like seven or eight threes, and this dude I don't remember this dude's name on their team. Wayne Chisholm. Yeah, well, I was guarding Chisholm, but they, were, they had a point guard. Duke? Uh, no, nah, I don't remember his name. Light-skinned guy, really fucking good. He was 27 feet, boom, 25 feet, boom, just coming down, like bombing us. And we weren't playing bad. They were just playing so good. It made us look like shit. And I feel like that's the kind of thing you get into with either the Warriors or uh, like the the Thunder have it in spurts. The Warriors do it all the time, and Cleveland has seemed to found it. Which is I, a, I don't trust the Cleveland thing yet. I know the Cleveland fans think everyone's <laughs> against them. I just think the East sucks. It's it's a, it's a terrible like conference. the Celtics. It's took, a weak conference. Took Atlanta in a six games. We had like five guys, and then Atlanta just even though they're kind of in those games, they just couldn't close. Right. And uh, it's no reflection on whether Cleveland's great or bad or whatever. It's just I don't have a feel for how good they are because, like, you look at OKC, right? You watched that game yesterday. They had, like, seven guys that were competing 100%, like, competing their asses off, like playoff guys. Right. Even Roberson. Robertson. Robertson. I can't. I, that Roberson-Robertson <laughs> thing kills me to think because yeah. I always see things how it's spelled or right. how – but even he was flying around like he seemed like a playoff guy in that game. Yeah. Ibaka, Kanner, Adams, these guys are playing at a really high level. And I just didn't see that from people in the East. Yeah, it's You know, a, you watch it's, Atlanta, it's like they got four guys playing hard. Yeah. And five guys kind of playing hard. I got to do, uh, I guess I had a Blue Apron really quick. Um, all week I've been eating Blue Apron because they sent us some Blue Apron. My wife has been cooking uh, the Blue Apron stuff every night. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Stop wasting money on expensive takeout. Just sign up with Blue Apron. You should do this. I had it in New York. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. You just go home. But they, you don't have to get takeout. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It's less than $10 per meal. They will deliver you all the fresh ingredients you need for a delicious and healthy home-cooked meal. They have established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. It can be delivered to 99% of the continental U.S. Here's some of the meals they have available in May. Crispy cotton cabbage slaw, tacos <laughs> with pepita pineapple and avocado salsa. Middle Eastern chicken and chickpea stew with pita croutons. I actually had this on Tuesday night and it was delicious. It was like very little chicken tiki marsala uh, Pan-seared pork chops with two cheese mashed potatoes and sautéed spinach. Um, again, sign up with Blue Apron right now uh, at blueapron.com slash BS and you can get your first two meals for free. That's blueapron.com slash BS. So Durant, they'll have one game where he's the best guy on the court. He'll have 44 and they'll win. There will be the one Westbrook game like we had in game five where right. he, he goes for 37, 11, and 9 with seven right. turnovers and he's just forced <laughs> to nature and they win that one. Curry's going to win at least one by himself. The Curry Clay, we hit 15 threes combined, that'll happen. So now I've just taken four games off the board, and now it's a best of three. I think this goes seven. I think it could too. I mean, if you. I best really of three, do. 
Be- I think best of three works out to like, what do you get out of Ibaka? What do you get out of Adams? What do you get out of Cantor versus what do you get out of Draymond? And how are you rebounding against these guys? Because the, the Thunder are just a bigger team. Yeah. And you can't win a championship without your inside play being being tight. And and also it, the Warriors didn't have to deal with this last year. Yeah. They didn't have the bully ball team in the paint that just said, oh, you, you really are going to play Draymond Green at center? Right. Now, the counter to that is their lineup of death at the end. When they spread the floor, they just make it impossible to keep somebody like Cantor out there. Yeah, it does make it. Yeah, if they spread if they spread the floor, then you instantly lose the effect of having those big guys out there. So, and that's you, why I'm worried I might be overreacting because San Antonio didn't have that lineup, and they they tried Kawhi at the four a little bit, and it just they just were getting killed in the boards. And it you, you would think it would have been Aldridge, Kawhi, Danny Green, and two guards, right? And they just didn't have it. They didn't have those five guys. Who, Golden State has the five guys. Who do you think wins game one? Probably Golden State. Just because uh, I think, okay, so it should be such a different style. When you have, you're going against a team that can't make any outside shots, and now all of a sudden you have a team that's going to go 15 for 30 in game one. Do you? I, 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 the, the one thing that I really, it, this is, I hate saying this because it sounds like a crutch. I think each game will depend on how they're refereed. Because you look at uh, game two and game four of San Antonio OKC, and OKC was just bully ball. Every play was a foul, and they just weren't calling it. And the more they got away with, the more that wasn't called, and the more they were getting away with. And it just they they controlled the game and the physicality of it. If they can do that against Golden State, that's great for them. They won't let you do it to like Steph though, like Steph and those like Clay. Like I feel like they kind of protect those guys. But do you think? But you know, Waiters will the Waiters Robertson. Westbrook, if Westbrook decides to play defense, which he didn't, yeah, he took the first four games off defensively in the in the Spurs series. But if they really are pushing him, nudging him, doing what Chris Paul does, chipping him, Adams is sticking his ass out, trying to knock <laughs> him down, coming around the baseline, and they're just doing that the whole series, that's right. going to affect Steph. What do you think? Tate, you agree? Wouldn't you chip Steph all the time? That's why Delvin Delvin's his best defender. Yeah. 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 You want to put the fear of God in Curry that he's going to hurt his ankles. Even though you're not like trying to maim him or anything, but you're just like, I'm knocking you, I'm pushing you, I might step on your foot. You better be careful. Like you're not running amok. Yeah, if you get if you get in Steph's head, because he gets he gets hot headed. He 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 has temporal moments or temperamental moments where he gets emotional and people push him and he pushes back. And I mean, sometimes that can work against you because he gets in the zone. <laughs> and he, yeah. whereas like other people that would take them out of the game for some reason, it makes him better. Yeah. So, yeah, like, he does do, take it. I like that he, he gets a little alpha doggy when that stuff happens. Yeah. Like, do you want to piss off Steph Curry? Cause like, how do, how do you use that against him? Like, pissing him off doesn't make him worse, it makes him better. But also, you want to be physical with him and you want to like not let him have his way around the court. But Chris Paul's the guy who has done it the best. I noticed yesterday, and I noticed this the last three games with San Antonio, once OKC, the bullying, the bully ball. Right. And just at some point, somebody on San Antonio needed to just clothesline one of those guys going to the basket. Just I, take the flagrant. <laughs> Dave, I was waiting I for that, David West I was to say, do I thought, it. I thought that was yeah. West was waiting David to do West, it. Like, this is why you're in the team. Just yeah. nail somebody just <laughs> once. Because the OKC guys were just going to the basket with impunity. Yeah. You know? And they were just completely fearless. And uh, and and OKC just they it, they were never stopped. West, that's why you're on the team. Hit right. somebody. I'm not saying like hockey enforcer, but I mean you know make somebody think twice when they're yeah. flying. I mean to the we rim. get that note all the time from our coaches, like make them pay when they drive the lane. Did when they Westbrook come even paint. get nailed in that series? I don't think so. Golden I State he... Bogut is going to nail somebody. Azalee will nail somebody, and Draymond will absolutely nail oh, yeah. somebody. Draymond, Draymond definitely. I give it. A game and a half before Draymond does it. So here's another thing OKC could do that I think would work. I, I would I would be talking to Draymond. I would have multiple guys. I want to get Draymond upset. I want to get in his head. I want to get him yelling. I want to get him out. Go oh, yeah. get all alpha doggy. Oh yeah. I want him yapping. Good. Get that get that way because I think he can get too carried away with that stuff. Yeah, and then he becomes turnover prone. Like yeah. the moment you get into his head, he starts making terrible decisions. Get a tech, 
get a double tech both ways. Yeah. Adam should be trying to get him the whole series, trying to get him to take a swing at him. <laughs> His goal should be: I want Draymond Green to throw a punch at me. <laughs> Because it'll bounce off my head and Draymond Green will break his head. <laughs> I'll just walk away like Frankenstein. But you know what, though? I mean, we can talk about this all we want. Whoever has the best player in this series is going to win. Like, if Durant's the best player in the series, OKC's okay, going to win. Yeah, I was trying to you figure know? out what it's really, the one thing is. Sometimes it's that simple. Yeah, well, I was trying to figure out what the one thing is that OKC has to do to win the series. And I, think that, I think you're right. I think that's it. Like, you just have to have that guy be on. And who guards Westbrook in this series? Honestly, I don't think anybody can. I don't think I so. I think either. you kind of just have to like. You put Clay on him? You have to just concede that. Or, you, I mean, you can try to keep the ball in Westbrook's hand. Good luck with that. But if you put Clay on him, you're risking foul trouble for Clay. Yep. And you're putting a lot of miles on him. Oh, yeah. He's going to run him. I mean, fourth quarter, maybe you maybe you do it. I, Iguodala, I'm guessing, would guard Durant. Yeah. Um, Curry, you're gonna hide on on Robertson and who, Deion Waiters, whoever right. else. But uh, Clay, I mean, that's what do you think, Tate? Uh, Clay's gonna guard him, but Curry Curry's gonna guard him some too. Westbrook Curry, Curry doesn't like Curry doesn't. Tate like thinks. That. See, I think air. that's. I think Westbrook Curry. I think Westbrook's gonna take that so personally. I think so. Is Curry. He's gonna like. Yeah. But I think Westbrook even more because like, I feel like Curry's smart enough to recognize like. Limitations. I, I'm, yeah, like the limitations, and like I'm also part of a team. Whereas right. Westbrook is just like, what? Like fuck? Like okay, let's like he knows like everyone's watching. He knows all the oh, shit yeah. people said about him. Like he he's got that huge chip on his shoulder, and it's like this is the dude. This is the unanimous MVP. All right, let me show you how much of an MVP you are. And that don't can either... you feel like the? I think a lot of guys in the league feel that way. I think Chris Paul. Every time I've been to a Quip Warriors game, I feel like Chris Paul's like. Fuck this guy. I'm better than this guy. Yeah, I can't absolutely. believe everybody thinks this guy's the best guy. I know I'm better than this guy. And then like, like LeBron, all the grenades, he's kind of... <laughs> now he's like taking shots at Steve Kerr. Like, you can tell the Kerr thing drives him crazy. Yeah. He's like, I'm better than this guy. I'm the best guy in the league. That's the crazy part is like the the MVP award is so like misgiven, especially when people... For, I feel like people have forgotten what MVP means. Like it's not your favorite player. It's not the best player it's the best player wait you wouldn't have voted for curry no oh no I, no Le oh no lebron's the Come most on. valuable player they won 73 games yeah but okay take stop it take lebron away from cleveland take steph away from the from the warriors and which team does worse that I cleveland team is shit without lebron well if that without lebron Kyrie is just jacking it like they don't you if you take steph away from the warriors they still win 70 games. This is one of my... No, no way. Stop it. You Come don't on. think so? No. I think they're like a 50-win team without them. So, and you, but they're even, minus okay, 23. Even, even giving them 50, you think if you take LeBron away from Cleveland, they're as good as they were this season? Well, So this is one of my favorite ways to figure out the MVP. You replace the player with an average player at his position, right? So replace Steph Curry with Jared Jack. How many how many games did the Warriors win? I would say like fifty one. Fifty, yeah. Replace LeBron James with Marvin Williams. How many games does Cleveland win? I think they won like fifty eight. Really, fifty eight? No, I think they won fifty eight. I think that's. You they, think they won fifty eight games this year? So <laughs> with if you replace Marvin Williams for LeBron. I still think they're a 500 team. They have a lot of talent. They have Kevin Love and Kyrie and Tristan Thompson. But they're the highest Le payroll in the league. But look, but I feel like LeBron, in the same way Steph Curry brings something to the Warriors team that they don't have when he's gone, because the Cavaliers team right. I don't think is, is as good as the Warriors team, I think if you take someone like well, him. Well, definitely the coaches weren't as good. Yeah, yeah. I think if you take him out of that equation, the mentality changes the way like they don't have that leadership that LeBron has like they don't have all the intangibles not to mention him being the best player like I think if you lose that I feel like by a margin whether it's small or not he is more valuable to that team than Steph is to the Warriors because the Warriors are but a system team too like Curry's won the Warriors won 25 straight to start the year 73 for the season I, my whole thing when I did the awards bout, I just rewarded Warriors left and right. I put Clay <laughs> in the second team. I had uh, 
six man, I had Iggy first and Livingston third. Uh, I just, anywhere I could reward that season, I did. Because it was like, that's never happened before. So if you had, if you owned the Warriors and the Cavaliers, and they said you had to spend your season minus LeBron or uh, Steph, you'd rather lose Steph. I'm confused. Did I say that right? Or you'd rather no. lose LeBron. You think Steph's oh, more valuable. I'd much rather lose LeBron. Yeah, because that could have revolved the team around Kyrie and Love But do you think that works, guys. though? No, and you're a 500 team at that point. But then you don't... Exactly, so you're not where you are now. Right. You don't get here without LeBron. I thought... I think, I, the voted, Cal- I think the Warriors have a better chance of getting where they are without, without Steph than the Cavaliers have of being in the finals minus LeBron. I voted LeBron third. Who was second? Kawhi Ka- Leonard? Kawhi. Kawhi Leonard, yeah. You know why I did LeBron third? Because the weird subtweet stuff. <laughs> like, to me, it's like most valuable also means, like, are you a good teammate? Yeah. And I thought LeBron was a shitty teammate this season. <laughs> it's like, why are you taking... Why are you taking when your team is in a little bit of turmoil? Why are you taking picture Instagram pictures with you and Dwayne Wade working out in Miami? What does that mean? You're a free agent at the end of the year. Why do you want like, your guys to even wonder you know, what that means? I think LeBron treats his team like they're his girlfriend. So like you do things. The girlfriend that he's not going to marry? Yeah, like you yeah. do you do things like like think about what people do in relationships. So like you get into a fight with your girl and then like you go out to like a club or you like post an Instagram picture of you out with some girl at like a club or a bar or some like friend of yours you know she kind of doesn't like just to like rile her up a little bit to get her like like blood pumping Can like I he just does things he does things to his teammates that you would do in a relationship and not even like and it's clearly not a good relationship I see one, your analogy but if I had ever done that to my wife I would have gone to bed that night she would have waited a half hour and then she would have put a pillow over my head and murdered me <laughs> And I but would see, be dead. But that's different between your wife and your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're, it's a girlfriend, it's different. When she was my girlfriend, it would have been the same thing. <laughs> she just would have poured gasoline in the bed and set it on fire. So I never really had the opportunity to do stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, like subtweeting and like, you know, it's about you. So yeah. then you have to like have the conversation or you just like, you respond differently. Like it's, it's like these weird things you do. These passive aggressive things people do to try to get a response out of somebody. All right, make a prediction. I'm going to go. Oh, you want to take OKC. I could feel it. <laughs> you do. I'm going to go Cavs. I'm going to go Cavs Warriors rematch. Me too. I, I would say I have Warriors over Cavs. I think the OKC thing. I'm going to go Cavs Warriors rematch. I think Warriors Thunder goes to seven. Me too. I think it goes seven. I think, you know who wants it to go to seven? The NBA. The NBA, of course. Yeah. And it, the officiating will be structured very carefully to always to give people. Seven. Yeah. Um, thanks to Blue Apron. Stop ordering expensive takeout for less than $10 per meal. Blue Apron will deliver you all the fresh ingredients you need for a delicious and healthy home cooked meal. Right now, you can get your first two meals for free by going to blueapron.com slash BS. Thanks again to 5 4 Club. It's a $60 a month high-end clothing membership that will provide you with stylish clothes that are bound to make you stand out in the crowd. Go to 54club.com. Use promo code BS at sign up for 50% off your first package. That is $120 worth of clothing for $30 for your first month's package. Don't forget about the Ringer Podcast Network, keeping it 1600, The Watch, Ringer NBA Show, Ringer NFL Show, all new feeds you should subscribe to. Don't forget about any given Wednesday, June 22nd on HBO. And uh, and Trayvon, we didn't talk about Hamilton this time. Oh, yeah, man. We'll save it. I still yeah. haven't gone. Yeah, you got to go, man. You got you got a month and a, a month and a half. You preach to the Church of Hamilton. Oh, yeah. I am the pastor, the most ev- evangelical Hamilton fan you'll ever meet outside of their family members probably but and you're doing a hamilton podcast i am it's uh is it up it's not up yet though. it's we just recorded episode seven we want to get a good backlog it's it's hard to book people because they're all so busy um but i think we're going to start releasing the end of this month or like first week of june i think and what's the there. title of the podcast it's called the room where it's happening okay and is my son going to be a guest at some point or no maybe uh, like we, a 10 we minute guest we want to have they're, they're doing Eduham where they're like letting shows, uh, there's shows that are all just kids. 
And so we want to actually talk to the kids about the show. So. He'll come on and do one of his one of his raps. Yeah, I like. I mean, have, he speaks I'd, French. <laughs> He's learned how to speak French from Hamilton. <laughs> Tell him to bring it on, man. He'll be a star. Are you sure he can wear a Colonial Soldier outfit to the Hamilton show? Oh yeah, they, they there's plenty of pictures of like kids wearing their costumes. Like they they love it. Okay, good. Because I can never tell if my son is a complete psychopath or not. So I always take comfort in the behavior nah, of other be, children. It would probably be the most adorable thing at the show. All right. My son loves Hamilton, hockey, and wrestling. Oh, I don't yeah. Know, I don't know what that, what all that means. All I'm missing I don't is know like the, a, that, those three things together. I, I hit two or three out of four of them. You hit two or three. Yeah. I, and, I, and he knows so little about baseball that he wasn't offended by your Yankee Stadium thing <laughs> on, on your desk. Yeah. Uh, Trayvon Free, you can check him out on Twitter. At it's Trayvon. Uh, at Trayvon. And uh, are you going to do stand up when you're in L.A.? I am. I'm, str- I'm still trying to get settled uh, before I jump back on the stand up stage so I can get my my life scheduled and settled and get into a flow. We're going to do a big ringer show this summer. Where we're going to do like two live podcasts. You're going to do some stand up. Yeah. Brendan Lynch is going to do stand up. We're going to do like try to cross all of the uh, beams in the ringer and do the uh, any given do Wednesday, the any given Wednesday stand-up tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to do... A, we have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I am super excited, and it's been great to start working with you and get to know you a little bit. Yeah, hey, this has been uh, so much fun. This is fun. All right, uh, thank you for that, and everybody, enjoy the weekend. Anytime y'all want to see me again, rewind this track right here, close your eyes, and picture me rolling.